Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. I took a little bit of a hiatus, but I am back and glad to be back. I'm going to kick things off with a project I've been wanting to revisit. Back in May of 2017, I had made this automated twist vase kinetic sculpture lamp thing. I wanted to try a different design where the vase twist action still happens but all the mechanics and electronics are hidden in the vase and all you see is this mysterious and hypnotic work of art twisting and moving up and down. It'll look something like this, but for real, without editing tricks. I'm looking forward to sharing my journey with you and invite you to follow along. In today's video, we'll look at designing a small version of the twist vases in Fusion 360. All right, here's the model we'll be making. You can see our twist vases here. And if I grab this and pull it up, you can see how it mimics the actual twist of the two containers coming together. Um, so after creating them, um, and probably the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we can add the cylindrical joints here in the motion link to make that work. And you know what? We'll also go into motion studies here to set that up. Um, really cool feature here in Fusion 360 where I can go ahead and uh, just play this as a little preview. Actually, let's put that on loop and you can kind of see how that creates that motion. Slow that down a bit. Um, so yeah, we'll cover all of that. Uh, let's just do the designing in this video and then I'll come back with all the cool motion stuff. All right, we're going to start by creating a new design and we're going to have to approach this with components instead of just some straight up bodies. And that's because we're going to add joints and you need components to be able to add joints. So let's dive right in. We'll begin by creating our first component here. I'm going to click right here below our browser where it says unsaved since I haven't saved it yet. Uh, we're going to name this. We'll start with the inner twist face. I'll just go ahead and call it inner. Click OK. And we're gonna create a sketch. Uh, it'll automatically activate that component, but if it's not activated, you wanna make sure that little radial button is clicked. Uh, we're gonna create a sketch on our XY plane here. I'm gonna come in with a polygon, circumscribe polygon. I'm gonna position it, uh, or the center point right off that origin. I'm gonna give it a radius of 25 millimeters. And then I'm gonna set a horizontal constraint here on that top edge. Finish that sketch, and I'm gonna come in with another sketch on that front plane there. And here I'm gonna grab my line tool, so L for line. I'm gonna go straight up uh, 80 millimeters there. Make sure you've got that vertical constraint there. Finish sketch. And that is basically it. This is the beauty of these twist faces. They are ridiculously simple to make. I used to make these with the whole different, much more complicated workflow, but this is the way to go here. All right, so we're going to do our one final step here, which is just to create a sweep. Here we're going to go to create, down to sweep. All we do is select our profiler and then click on path. This line becomes our path. And here we can just give it a twist angle. So if I type 60 or 360 degrees, you see our 360 twist. I'm going to back off just slightly and go with 180 and then click OK. Now the reason it just gave me a uh, color there is because I have a uh, component coloring toggled on and that's just shift N on your keyboard. Um, we'll toggle, we'll just randomly assign colors to your components so you don't have that just a uh, gray default look if you want it. All right, I'm gonna click on uh, bodies here. Let's untoggle sketches, don't need to see that. And for 3D printing this, I'm actually gonna send this as a solid into the slicer and then I would print it in vase mode. But for just visualization purposes here, I'm gonna go ahead and shell this out. And so we'll go to modify shell. I'm gonna select the top and the bottom face there and do a 0.5 millimeters. And this will um, allow us to see how it's gonna actually look after it's printed. All right, that's the first twist face. We're gonna come in with our second twist face. I'm gonna create a new component for that. So right click, new component. I'm gonna call this outer. And here, I don't need to see that first component, so I'm gonna untoggle that visibility there and collapse it. I'm gonna begin with a sketch on the XY plane here, and then I'm gonna come in with my polygon tool, circumscribe polygon right under the create menu. I'm gonna go with the radius of this time 25.5 because I'm gonna leave a half a millimeter gap between the two um, twist faces there. I'm gonna put a horizontal constraint on that top edge there. Finish sketch and then again, I'm gonna come in with a sketch on the front plane here. So that ZX plane, L4 line. I'm gonna start right at the origin, go straight up, making sure it's straight. I see that vertical constraint. I'm gonna give it a distance of 80 millimeters, finish sketch, create down to sweep, choose my profile, click path, choose my path, 
give it a twist angle of 180 degrees, enter, and there we have it. All right, that's our second twist face. How simple was that? Let's just uh, add our shell on this one. So modify shell. I'm just going to shell the bottom here. And this time I want to go with an outside thickness. Otherwise, both bodies will interfere there. So you always have to select the uh, direction first. And then I'm going to do my uh, shell thickness of 0.5 millimeters. Now if I toggle both bodies on by clicking the top level of my component here, make sure both bodies are turned on. I can go into the bottom view, take a look, and I should have a little gap in between them. And I can inspect that distance by clicking on inspect and clicking both of these edges and it should tell me 0.5, exactly what I want. And that clearance will control the uh, basically how smooth or how fast or slow these twist faces will fall if you when you drop them and, and let them go so you can always play around with that it's going to differ a little bit for um, different printers all right and that is basically it for designing the twist faces so you can see here i have them as components so i can move them around when you do that you always want to make sure to click here and uh, revert position to bring them back um, you know what i'm going to do at this stage of it actually uh, that inner component there let's toggle that I'm gonna it'll print a lot better if we just give this um, a base looking ahead the reason I took off the top and bottom is because I'm, I want to fit the whole electronics and other 3d printed parts in here um, but at this point it would make more sense to keep the base there um, we can still it'll still work you would just need like a brim if you're gonna print this um, like uh, without it but anyway um, you can have the option of printing it with or without um, all you have to do, if you go back to the shell command here on the timeline, I'm going to edit that, and I hold command, and I just click back on that bottom, it'll put the, the bottom there. Um, but, you know, that doesn't matter anyway, because when I print this, I'm just going to, I can come here and just suppress that shell feature, so suppress feature, and um, it will just send it as a solid body, and then I would use the vase uh, command there, or the, the vase option in the slicer to print it. Um, if you want me to show that, I can show that in a different video, but at th this video I just wanted to go ahead and uh, show you how to model these twist faces. Let me go ahead and unsuppress that. So go ahead and make your own, um, follow along. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, and uh, I'll gladly check them on them, uh, especially like the first you know few days after posting this video. If you have a 3D printer, definitely print these out. They're oddly satisfying how they come together um, you know, and slide within each other. All right, as always, I will upload the Fusion files, the F3D files, to my Patreon page as a thank you to all my Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, check the link out below. Also, I have some links to a few other things, including my Fusion 360 constraints, cheat sheets, and uh, my online courses. So, all right, guys, I will see you in a few.